Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020. In this video I'm going to try to answer the question, can the GB fly around the world? And in order to answer this question we don't actually have to fly it around the world. The critical thing is to cover the critical leg of that journey, which is the longest leg that you have to make. In other words, if you set up the entire flight, making sure to minimize the distance between airports, what is the leg that you still have to do that is the longest leg? And as far as I can tell, that is the one from Goose Bay to Narsar Swak in Greenland, the one that you see here, 674 nautical miles. Otherwise, we can basically always plot uh, some other uh, smaller leg on the rest of the journey. For instance, from Narsar Swak to Keflavik is just a tiny bit less, 656. It's tight though. And so we're basically talking about fairly evenly sized legs. Airports on the eastern end of Iceland aren't exactly huge, but they do exist. And let's say the outskiris are, that's not a long enough strip. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Thara's just sand. Uh, I think we'd want um, Lassimuth, uh, Lassimuth, Lassimuth. Uh, might be good. That's a shorter leg. So that would cover our Atlantic trip and after that all the legs would be smaller. And on the other side, when it comes to the Pacific, of course we would be island hopping along the Aleutians. So the critical leg is the one from uh, Kamchatka, if, assuming that we can fly out of it. Ericsson, can we get there? Yeah, that's uh, Ericsson would be safe and that's 670 uh, sorry, uh, 567. Ah, uh, this one, well, that's just grass. We don't want that. I'm discounting the grass airports in general. This is a concrete one, 5,000 meters, and that would be 635 nautical miles, and all the other uh, legs would be shorter than that, potentially. So, yes, the critical leg is the one... As far as, uh, you could maybe make it shorter with some of these strips over here, but I think they're all like small strips or grass strips. But generally, I consider this one to be the essential one, the one from Goose Bay to Greenland. So that is the one we are going to test the GB on, and it should be able to cover all the other legs as necessary. So given that, the question is, which GB do we use? Uh, we have two variants, and they are different. Uh, this one has a uh, 1,520 pound empty weight and a maximum takeoff weight of 2,676, maximum fuel 160 gallons. And then we can compare to the other one. This one has a somewhat less empty weight, about 100 pounds less, so a little bit more than 100 pounds less, but only 104 gallons in, uh, available and the maximum takeoff weight is only 2,280. So the R2 can actually carry more fuel. I don't know whether its consumption is different as far as the engine is concerned. They give these endurance numbers and range numbers that are obviously wrong. Uh, this is our problem. This is why we have to test it. If this range number could be relied upon, then of course uh, we'd know our answer already, but it can't be relied on. First of all, there's wind. It could be against us and all that business. Uh, but we also can't rely on it because, well, it's not reasonable that these two have the exact same number anyway. So we know that it's probably wrong. So we will test it. I will test with my actual weight, which is 155, which mercifully is a lower payload. But uh, this still says CGI limit. I'll trust that it's OK. And we are going to fly this thing. Well, the water, weather is wonderful. Actually, I had a little bit of trouble with the weather when trying to do this uh, with some other planes. Specifically, the Boeing 247 had an oil issue. The engine kept getting on fire because I couldn't quite get the oil right for that flight. But this does not have that problem, I think. So we'll be able to figure this out, maybe. And we're off.
keep things safe. We know that we don't need full throttle on this to get to its maximum speed. And it sure does go over speed easily. Oh, let me double check that we actually have all the fuel that we're supposed to. It sometimes cheats me on that. I mean, can this be used for an around the world flight? You can see just looking at it that one might think that this is quite dubious. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Would this be the plane that you would choose to fly in an around the world flight? Judging from the streaks of rain or snow, the wind might be against us. Could pick a better day to fly or something. I wonder if there's de-icing at all. I don't think it intended for me to do this. Yeah, I somehow feel like de-icing is unlikely. So that's gonna be fun. Well, we are uh, above above the lower cloud layer here. Looking so cute. Doesn't it look cute? It looks cute. It looks like a comic book plane or some plane a kid, kid drew, doesn't it? Now it said its ceiling was 11,000 feet and I figure that's probably right. I don't think this is a pressurized cockpit and I can't imagine fitting some sort of oxygen tank in here. Okay, my mixture does something. It doesn't do, do a whole lot though, I'll have to say. The plane is very stable considering the wind being what it is. I mean, it is insufferably cute. <laughs> you just can't pick a more amusing plane to fly around the world with. I'm rather surprised it's so stable. So this is uh, frozen, mostly frozen over Lake Melville. But we do have a patch of Lake Melville, Melville that is not frozen over. That's the lake that Goose Bay is uh, basically at the southern end of. Southwest end of. There is no autopilot in here, obviously. So it's all manual for this one. Uh, I don't want to go down. Well, maybe we can pick up some speed though. The wind's not as bad up here. I've got an external app, uh, the little nav map thing, to see what our situation is. And it's looking like a 20 knot wind against us right now. It was more like 40 down below. I'll just go for 10,000 feet. Currently ground speed 221 knots. Looks like up here the ice has cleared up. Really stable. The plane is unexpectedly stable. I thought I was going to have more of a challenge here. So it's got to be about a three hour flight. Well, the landscape of Newfoundland and Labrador here. Okay, so status report. We are halfway through the flight and it has taken about an hour and a half so it is looking like a three hour flight overall and well the plane has way more range than i thought it would have we're only at the three quarter mark on the fuel gauge i'm not 100 percent sure it's accurate but i think it is one thing that's not accurate right now is the airspeed indicator as i am absolutely sure that the pito tube is frozen over it's completely iced over and I have no idea how to warm it up. So uh, maybe there's something around here, but I don't know if uh, the GB had a pito heat system thing. So yeah, we'll just have to do without the airspeed indicator until it warms up some, some other time. And we've got about an hour and a half left to go. It's been very stable. There's been some gusts here and there, but been able to deal with that uh, it's of course a problem if there's too much of a gust and it throws you into overspeed territory 
but so far we haven't had that. And the wind, uh, which had been a headwind initially, has been more of a crosswind so far. Occasionally more of a tailwind, but right now it's just a mild nine knot crosswind. So uh, not hurting us too much. And that is the situation. We've got a ground speed of 246 knots, you know, holding around 10,000 feet. And yeah, it holds the altitude fairly well, except we just had a gust recently that brought us a little bit high, so I had to get it back down and we're still sort of stabilizing out from that. So yeah, that's probably about right on the heading. Yep, somewhere around there is fine for now. And we continue. Okay, we see some signs of Greenland to our left there. And we should be maybe half an hour till our landing. It depends on how fast we actually go uh, based on the wind speed and everything. But yeah, less than 100 nautical miles. So maybe under half an hour. And the airspeed indicator still doesn't work. <laughs> Hopefully when we get to lower altitude maybe it'll warm up. I doubt it though. This is Greenland we're talking about. Um, we haven't reached half tank yet, so this thing has way more than a thousand nautical miles range, more than maybe even a thousand five hundred nautical miles range, which I'm not sure it's supposed to have. Um, there was a variant of the R2 that had much larger tanks. It had 300 gallon tanks. I mean, uh, 300 gallons worth of tanks. This only has 160 though. The, uh, it, it, this seems to be a confused situation because the R1 had 160 gallons. The R2, uh, which was meant to be a cross-country racer, had 300 gallons. But this currently has 160 like the R1 does. Um, and with this amount of fuel, uh, at least according to Wikipedia, it has about an 800 nautical mile range. But you know, I haven't been pushing it like heavily, but I haven't been moderating either. We've got the manifold pressure at the top of the green range, and we've got the RPM at the top of the green range, and we've got the, well, before it froze up, uh, the airspeed indicator was at the top of the green range or close to it. So, yeah, I mean, it's not like we're flying at a really slow speed or anything. And if the cruise speed of the R1 was 230 knots, we've been doing about that. And so I'm not going for full fuel efficiency here, and we've got a lot of range, much more than I was expecting. And so this has got to be a little bit rough on landing because we're heavier than we were supposed to be. So it's very interesting. Which does mean that I would like my airspeed indicator, but you know, we'll see what happens. We It's about a three hour flight, so this thing has more than seven hours, six, seven hours of fuel instead of the four hours that I was supposed to have. I mean, it seems like it's the cross-country version that's, that has the range of the cross-country version with the 300 gallon tanks. So maybe they should just increase it 300 gallon, to 300 gallons and also increase the fuel consumption. I don't know. I mean, the fuel consumption of this Wasp should be pretty well known. This is not a rare engine by any means. I'm getting the feeling that the photo scenery in Greenland is not going to be great. <laughs> Just looking at the textures from afar here. Yeah, those, I mean, of course they haven't taken wonderful aerial photos of Greenland. They ought to. It's important for science and everything. But... Yeah, I get the feeling that mu not much by way of resources is dedicated to that idea. Uh, so, we sort of see an inlet right in front of us. And basically, Narsar Squat Swak uh, is sort of down that way, if we followed that inlet right there. It's pretty um, prominent, basically, as long as you don't accidentally go along, like, the inlet over there <laughs> or something. You just need to make sure that you keep this other stuff to the left and then 
Yeah, that's a pretty prominent inlet that we can just follow down. I think I'll start descending somewhat. Especially in the hope of warming up the pitot tube. Actually, it's doing a good job sort of hitting the descent rate that I want here. Interesting. It's been a very smooth ride so far. Well, I think this is just sort of generic scenery tiles. Not a huge surprise. Uh, the airspeed indicator is, uh, well, it's rocking about. I don't know, maybe it's just the turbulence knocking it about. I don't know if it's actually got a reading now or not. Oh, oh, well, it's deviating a lot more than it was before, so maybe we've got it back. That would be good. Well, we are below 5,000 feet now, so we've done half our descent. Still about 42 nautical miles away, so I'll sort of level out here. Uh, yeah, the airspeed indicator is definitely moving now. Well, it's not like I expected Greenland to look too much different from this, but uh, I, I don't know, I don't really want the line there. I guess uh, that's uh, the, the generic scenery on the left and the real stuff on the right, maybe? Maybe. I don't know. Hmm. I mean, this seems convincing, this sort of rockiness. But, no, it might be generic still, after all. Yeah, I think so. Nice details though. I mean, it is more detailed, I think. The coast is very nicely detailed here. It's certainly better than it was back there. Well, we're still at 4,000 feet or so. So those mountains to the right are pretty tall. Well, at least we should definitely be aware of them on approach. We're going to have to cut across from this inlet to get to the the intended airfield and sort of see the spot where I'm going to be crossing over over there. But yep, this is our little gap that we cut across. The airfield should be fairly low in altitude, basically sea level. Yeah, so this is our little pass. I get the feeling that there probably ought to be more complicated mesh around here. <laughs> it feels should be over there somewhere. Um, I think I want to get to the water and come around. This should be uh, like a challenge airport or something. Well, suddenly the wind sound has decreased. I think it's... I think that's it over there. It's just not quite as prominent on the landscape. Okay. Well, I'm gonna cut the throttle. Yep, that's our airport right there. Uh, I might have to come around. I think I'm too fast. I'm gonna sort of touch and go here. Eh, I'm not even gonna touch. It's a little bit fast. I'll come around. Oh, so let me recalibrate this. Bit interesting doing this with the hills in the way, but. 
Sure, now it's shaky all over the place when I'm trying to land, right? The rattling seems to just be when it's about to stall kind of thing. Well, we're too far this side this time. Uh, well, I guess I like it warning me, but... Okay, we'll try it. Okay, uh... Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, why is it going like this? Oh no, this is it, this is it. Uh, I, I, I. Okay. Um. Did I actually kill kill the engine or I think I killed the engine. Yeah, I came in a little bit too hard there. Oh, boost pump primer. Oh, it already stopped the thing. No, let me continue for a sec. Anyway, two hours and fifty-five minutes. Oh, it's still fine. It it's fine. It's okay. We can start it. It's all right. Oh wait, uh, we probably need a cer certain amount of RPM. Hold on, let me try that again. Prime, prime, prime. Okay, maybe it's not okay. We'll 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 work on that. Anyway, <laughs> parking brakes. We're here, and the goal was to test the thing's range, and it has lots of range, so I'll leave you to figure out what to think about that. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.